Hello, friends, and welcome to episode number 51 of Nostalgia Talk. I'm James, and I know what a lot of you guys are thinking. Where do we go from episode number 50? That one was pretty big, not going to lie, and the response is pretty friggin' huge. Well, where do we go from here? Ladies and gentlemen, Katie Von Till. Episode 51, that's where we go. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> featuring you. <laughs> quite, quite literally, we go to episode 51. Yeah. Hi, everybody, I'm Katie Von Till. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, actually, before I introduce Katie, um, w on the video that I posted last where I said uh, two years ago, Friday, I started Nostalgia Talk, when I said if I sold shirts that had the Nostalgia Talk logo, would you guys buy them? A lot of you guys very surprisingly said yes. So maybe it'll happen because honestly, now I feel kind of tempted. I just bought my own customized all-time low t-shirt, so maybe I'll... Uh, make some shirts and sell them online. But anyway, so for anyone who doesn't know, Katie Von Till is an actress and voice actress. Uh, she's made multiple TV appearances on sitcoms such as Two Broke Girls, Young Sheldon, uh, which my father is actually binge watching right now. Um, oh, is he? Well, he'll see me. I'm, I th I've done seven episodes of that show. Okay, cool. Uh, what else? I didn't do it. Uh, late Night with Conan, I think. or one Yeah, of I did a lot shows. of sketches on Conan, a lot. I probably did... 15 or so sketches over the years at Conan. I really missed that show for two reasons. One, it's awesome to, as an actor, to go back to a place where you've already been, because that's so rare. So people know you, right? It's like, hey, Katie, welcome back. Most of the time when I go work on a show, I'm there for a day, maybe a week, and then I, and then I never see those people again. So it's, yeah. really nice to, it's really nice to do that. And I love doing comedy, and it was nice to have people write stuff for me to do. I, I, I miss it terribly. Mm, I just saw Trevor Noah. I mean, I get all of oh. these late night shows mixed up. Daily show, late night show, <laughs> uh, the tonight show, the late, late show. I get them all mixed up. So, I'm, so I just call them like, oh, it's the Trevor Noah show. It's the James Corden yeah. show. It's the Stephen Colbert show. Well, Conan was actually called Conan. So, right, yes, but he, yeah. had, but he had late night with Conan. So that's where I was confused. He had late night first. Yeah, yeah. he had late night with Conan O'Brien. Uh, and then he had the Tonight Show for a hot second. <laughs> yeah, hot um, second, literally. Yeah, that was an interesting debacle. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, and then I just have worked a couple episodes on a show of another former late night talk show host, George Lopez. He's coming oh, back nice. with a new sitcom. Uh, I think it premieres November fourth. I think, and I, I'm doing two episodes of that so far as the voice of TikTok. Oh, well, guys, set your DVRs for November the 4th. Um, you may hear me. <laughs> <laughs> and in addition to being in live action, I, of course, know Katie best as a voice actress doing multiple Disney stuff, such as Elena of Avalor, Sophia the First. Uh, this isn't Disney, but does uh, Batwoman, I almost said Catwoman, Lego Batwoman for the video mm -hmm. games, and the voice of the one and only legendary Disney character, Snow White. Yes, I'm the voice, current voice match of Snow White. Um, people are always like, where? How? And I yeah, well, when I, told, when I told my friends I'm going to be interviewing <laughs> Snow White, that was the response that I got. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine, one of my really good friends that's a set dresser with me on the show I work on, she's like, wait, voice of Snow White? How, how old is she? I was like, okay. I get the confusion. <laughs> Mind you, yeah. that movie is 85 years old. So, They're like, did she come back from the dead? Yeah, no. So, to be clear, the voice of Snow White is and always will be Adriana Casalotti. Thank you. And, I forget how to pronounce her name because it's so hard. Well, Adriana, Adriana, Adriana. No, I mean Casaloli, the last name. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've heard all kinds of pronunciations. Um, mm. uh, I think it's Adriana Casalotti. I'm not sure. I've heard many pronunciations as well, and obviously she is deceased. But um, I was grow when I was growing up, I did I want to be a Disney princess voice? You better believe I did. I absolutely did. Did it occur to me that I could be a voice that already existed? No. No, it did not. I did not know that that was a thing until I, until I took a class. I took a class on animation voiceover, and for a couple weeks, the teacher, um, who also did some voice matching, focused on voice matching. And I started by, um, you know, just picking various characters and working on them. And when the audition for Snow White came around, she was just somehow in my body. I didn't really have to work on her at all. Um, it just sort of, she lives inside me somehow, somewhere, I don't know. But yes, Adriana Casalotti is of course deceased. And so she can no longer do the voice when they need 
new stuff, right? So mm -hmm. shows at the parks, talking toys, video games, uh, appearances in commercials and animated shows and um, things like that. So my voice has been all over the world. Um, you know, it's at Shanghai, you know, it's Shanghai Disneyland, uh, Disneyland Paris, uh, Tokyo Disneyland, where I actually was a live performer many, oh, many years cool. ago as well. Yeah. So um, it's really neat to be part of that legacy. And when I got the job, um, I was the, the fourth one that did it regularly. There have been a couple of people who popped in, in and out here and there to do like a one off. Right. But the original is Adriana Castellotti. And then the next one was a woman named... Um, Oh, gosh. Why is this escaping me? It'll come to me. I'll look, um, I'll, so I'll look it up. Oh, Mary Kay Bergman. I got it. Mary Kay Bergman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And for any of the listeners who don't know, um, just actually on kind of a serious note, if you guys yeah. don't know who Mary Kay Bergman is, uh, she was a voice actress who did Disney, Nickelodeon. Uh, Prolific. She actually, yeah, she actually, uh, South Park. She also was the first voice of Timmy for the Fairly Odd Parents, And um, unfortunately, Mary Kay Bergman... Uh, she very sadly took her own life. And, she did. Uh, yeah, just uh, on that note, if anyone out there is feeling that way, don't be afraid to say something. Yeah. You know, like there, like I, I there, and there are actually people out there who are like, oh, you'll get over it eventually. Some people don't, and that's people don't. The hard thing about it. Yeah, um, and and I think um, you have to be in such a desperate place to be considering that, and there's no. There should be no stigma or shame in seeking help for mental health issues. And so if you're feeling down or need a little help, seek out a therapist, a friend, a parent, a, yeah. and anybody, and uh, just let them know how you're feeling. And yeah. I think that we've reached a point in society where people are much more understanding of um, that of sort of thing. Yeah, life. So Mary Kay Bergman, of course, um, unfortunately did take her life. She was prolific, you know, like you said, yeah. South Park. Uh, she was Daphne. Daphne, yeah. Scooby-Doo, yes, Daphne Scooby-Doo. She was, most people probably won't remember this, but she was Strawberry Shortcake in the early oh. years of Strawberry. You don't, do you even know what Strawberry Shortcake is? Oh, I, I remember Strawberry Shortcake. I didn't know she did the voice. Like, my sister went through a Strawberry Shortcake phase. Yeah, there was a, there was a precursor of whatever your sister's face would have been to when I was a little kid. And there was like a movie and everything. And then she disappeared for a while. And then, and then there was a resurgence. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she was um, the voice of uh, Daphne and Strawberry Shortcake. And Daphne now is voiced by um, uh, somebody, Gray Delisle, Gray yeah. Griffin, Gray Delisle, who's yeah, lovely. So, uh, somebody who, uh, do you know her? I know Gray, yeah. Okay, yeah, somebody that we both know then. Yeah, I know Gray. And uh, and then I think April Stewart is doing South Park now. Okay. Um, I'm not a huge fan of people that do South Park. I mean, she's a nice lady and very talented, but South Park is non-union, so mm -hmm. I oh, don't. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. So I'm not a big fan. I love. I mean, I think the show is so smart and so funny. And when I figured out it, when I found out it was non-union, I, I had to stop watching it just because <laughs> of my own, my own moral convictions. You know, Fair I deserve. I, yeah, I believe actors should be paid fairly and and should be getting residuals for their likeness and should get health care and pension benefits. So I had to stop watching it. Mm. So yeah. before I get to my first question, I got to ask. Oh, wait, one, second, one more thing. So okay. then after Mary Kay Bergman was this woman named Carolyn Gardner. Okay. And Carolyn Gardner knew Mary Kay Bergman. She oh. took class from Mary Kay Bergman. And Carolyn Gardner, I think, is still, um, she's a writer for shows at the parks. Like a, oh, like a nice. writer, writer. Yeah. And she had, when, when Mary Kay got the job, Carolyn had also auditioned and didn't get it. And then oh, she wow. took class from Mary Kay. And then when Mary Kay died um carolyn took it over so when i got it from carolyn um i think she was just ready to retire from voice acting at that time and just only focus on the writing she sent me the most beautiful note like oh. literally passing the crown and telling me how she had met the original adriana casalotti while working at the park and someone had said they sound a sounded alike and so they sang I'm wishing together and then she took class from Mary Kay Bergman and then she's and then she passed the crown to me it was so lovely for her to tie all of these women together in history I thought it was just so magical so part of me is really looking forward to well not really but the day I get to pass that on to somebody else mm -hmm. you know it's just yeah. neat yeah, yeah. 
So before I start the interview, I actually have to ask you, uh, would you like an apple? No. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> you don't know what I've done to that. I'm yeah, kidding. No, no poison apples for me, please. Yeah. <laughs> All, well, I mean, you're in LA. I'm in Nova Scotia. I can just mail it to you. It'll probably... The, It'll it be probably, rotten by the time it gets yeah, here. So yeah. Definitely not take a bite. Yeah. <laughs> probably be rancid. So uh, what got you interested in acting? Like, what were some of your biggest inspirations? Yeah, so... I got started in it because my my brother is um, six years older than me, mm -hmm. and so when he was growing up, my you know my parents were pretty involved in extracurricular activities with him. My dad was his little league coach, and once he my brother was you know starting to phase out of that as he's in high school, my dad was ready to get involved with something with me. Um, that we could do together. And needless to say, I am not an athletic powerhouse. So um, my dad saw an audition in the paper for a local community theater production of Annie. And we we both auditioned. So oh, my dad funny. and I both got into a community theater production of Annie together. I played Molly. He was in the the ensemble, played the cop and a waiter and a cabinet member and whatnot. And uh, wh 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 which one's Molly again? Molly's the youngest one, the one that cries and uh, of, of the orphans. Yes. Okay. See, uh, see, we did a at my high school. They did a musical version of Annie some years ago. I actually was just talking to one of the stars of that musical just the other day. Actually, I still talk to oh. one of my good high school friends. Uh huh. And um, I don't think I remembered the orphans' names, but I, believe it or not, a lot of my really good friends played them. So that's. Oh that's, yeah, I, I, I mean, just, I was just like, okay, that's Bronwyn. Yeah, that's every Kaylin. kid on the, every girl on the planet does Annie at some point if she's in theater at yeah. all. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I even have a, a friend who did the national tour of it when she was a kid. Oh cool. Uh, sent to Moses and. Uh, oh yeah, I. Uh, you know, I know who that is. Yeah, she was in Home Alone, and also, he was in Home Alone, and she and, was in a show called Beekman's World. Yeah, and, and I think and she was, was and was also in the Bulldogs. Right, I was just gonna say she was in the very show that got me to want to work into the film industry. She was indeed. Yeah, sent us a friend of mine. Uh, we've been friends since, gosh, a few months after I moved to LA in two thousand one. Lovely gal, and but yeah, she did. Uh, I think she did the national tour of that show, and um, yeah, everybody's sort of done it. If you're you know, my age or younger doing theater, Sarah Jessica Parker's age and younger doing theater, you've done Annie somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my dad and I did that together. And so that was a way for my dad and I to spend time together. So oh, that's nice. we did that show, then we did another show. And then my dad got on the board of directors of the community theater. He's still on it. He's still their legal counsel, even though he's retired. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think I did four shows there. We did three together, I think. And yeah, three together. And that started it. Once once you catch the bug, you catch it. You know, it's really hard to get rid of. My brother's also in the in the arts. He's a musician and singer in a very heavy band called Neurosis. Um, and he's also, uh, Neurosis is not gonna be touring anymore due to mental health issues actually of one of the band members. Ouch. And, yeah, and- um, going back to the earlier conversation. Yeah, uh, and uh, the, um, uh, but he has a solo career as well, and he's a poet, and he's very artistic. So, and my dad had been in bands when he was in high school. So, he's also a lawyer. He's a litigator. My mom teaches public speaking. We're all just sort of like performers, you know. I'm just sort of it's in my blood. Everybody in my family loves the arts. Um, we're all comfortable in front of audiences, and yeah, it just sort of happened. I mean, the loves of my youth were probably Judy Garland, like a lot of young people and um, she was who you know i wanted to grow up and be judy garland i did not know of course as a kid that she was you know on many substances and yeah. had, had really a horrible horrible uh life in many ways but yeah. you know she was certainly inspiration for me she was amazingly yeah. talented too amazingly yeah. talented yeah so from theater what was your first ever screen acting gig or yeah. re or regular acting gig on TV or film or I should have I should have asked it that way. Yeah, um the first time, well, when I after college I moved to New York and I was doing just theater. Mm -hmm. So, uh I was just doing, you know, theme park in Japan, Tokyo Disneyland. I was doing dinner theater in Florida. I was doing summer stock in New England, you know. I was, you know, doing everything and it was January of 
2001. It was 28 degrees outside. I was sitting on the sidewalk outside of the Actors' Equity building for an audition. And um, I was like, it's freezing. I need to go home. I'm a California native and from Northern California. But I was like, I can't take this anymore. It's just too cold. This is inhumane. So I moved to L.A. And about a year after I moved to L.A., I booked my first um, TV show. It was a show called For the People. Not to be confused with the most recent show called For the People. Um, it starred Leah Thompson. And, uh, yeah. And uh, I had like a, you know, one-line co-star on that show. Excuse me, Mr. Laurie, Mr. Kettle, would anyone here care for water? No, I'm the assistant's assistant. That's it. I had two lines. And that started everything. But I... I remember when I booked that job, I was like, I made it, which I didn't, but <laughs> Hey, it's a start. I mean, it's a start. Like, like my, it's a my, start. my, my first ever show last year, I was only working one day a week on it because I had another job. So uh -huh. yeah. So yeah, it's a start, I, it's right? A start. You gotta start somewhere. And it's interesting. It's all about perspective. I was at a, my cousin's wedding not too long ago. And my other cousin was there with her husband who I'd never met. And you know, he, we were talking about my career and everything, and he said, "Oh wow, you've re you've made it." And I thought to myself, "I have? Oh my god!" And I guess you know, depending on how you look at it, sure, I've made a living doing just acting since I haven't had a day job since 2005. Not, um, although I've had my worst year yet this past year. So, oh, god. yeah, it's uh, I've worked, I've worked, but it hasn't been enough or enough of the right kind of work to really make money. So. It's it's tough, but um, I'm not too worried about it. It's just everything sort of like cycles back around. I just got to keep hustling. Yeah, another good friend of this podcast is actually Daniel Ross, and um, uh, you know Daniel. I know the name. Yeah. He he's done Donald Duck on a couple of different things, and um, he... oh yes, he did um, a, a TV. I've only, I've met Tony Anselmo, but I've not right. met him. But I've seen a him on a podcast. Okay, yeah, that's how I know um, the name. Yeah. yeah, I interviewed uh, Daniel on this show last year. He did a TV show of it. He did, right? Uh, Mickey Mouse and the Roadster. Yes, that one. Thing, yes, which is yes. really, I still have a hard time saying that. I've got my Disney shirt just for this. Oh, nice. I love it. I'm probably going to wear it next weekend. I'm going to my first ever uh, HalCon, which is our oh. convention. So. Well, I'm going to Disneyland next week. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But uh, yeah, Daniel brought up uh, the fact that, you know, sometimes you don't know when you're working, you don't know when you're not going to be working. And hell, you you could be out of work for a long, long time. It's happened. Yeah, I mean, it's I've had friends who've had, had spells of years where they've not worked. And then all of a sudden they book a series regular on a show. Like you just never know. You never yeah. know, which is exciting and frightening. Mm -hmm. Right. So how did you get introduced to uh, voiceover work? Yeah, so I, you know, as I was m making my way through Los Angeles, of course, I, I knew what voiceover was. Uh, my dad, the lead singer of the band he'd been in in college, uh, made his living doing voiceover in Chicago. So when I was in college, my dad took me there for a weekend to follow him around. His name is Bob Bowker, Robert Bowker, mm -hmm. and follow him around as he did some sessions and what not to see what that was like and uh, so I knew it existed again I didn't know about voice matching um, and people would always say to me oh you have such an interesting voice you should take voiceover classes so I did I took some voiceover classes but getting into voiceover particularly back then was incredibly expensive mm -hmm. um, you know cost a couple thousand bucks to make a demo and you got to take classes and so I wasn't sure if I should go that route, but I was doing the national tour of Little Shop of Horrors, and I was in the airport between cities with a cast member who said the same thing, oh, you have such an interesting voice, you should do, you know, voiceover. And I said, I explained the reason why I hadn't jumped in, and she said, oh, you don't need a demo. And I was like, what? She's like, yeah, I got a friend of mine signed. She just, she just recorded some voices on a handheld tape recorder, and I walked it into my agent signed her, and I was like, I'm sorry, what? She's like, yeah, so when we go on hiatus, why don't you go record some stuff and I'll log it into my agent. And I was like, okay. So we, we had a hiatus for, for a month and uh, I came home and this was back in the days of CDs and a friend of mine's a post-production engineer, his name is William Tabanu. And I uh, went over to his studio and just like laid down some random stuff, random voices. You know, I was going toward animation because of my singing and musical background and I, 
that friend, I gave it to that friend. Her name is Latanya Holmes. I owe her a lot. She walked it into her agent. They passed, but I told the story to another friend while in an elevator, and she said, let me hear it. If it's any good, I'll walk it into my agent. She did, and they ended up signing me. So nice. that's how. It was luck. You know, I was talking about earlier, just sort of like, just put out there what you want and what you're looking to do, and you never know who's going to be able to help you. It was literally a girl on a moving walkway, sorry, a young woman on a moving walkway, and then a young woman in an elevator that made that this career happen for me. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. you, Little Shop of Horrors, uh, the reboot? Yeah, so it was on Broadway back in like 2004 or something with right. um, the one with uh, Hunter Foster and Carrie, uh, what is her last name? It's escaping me right now. Uh, but it was it was on Broadway. Actually, that was the first time it was on Broadway because originally it was an off-Broadway production. The production that everybody knows of, the original with um, Ellen Green was off-Broadway and then, of course, the movie. So this is actually the first Broadway national tour of the show. Um, but, yeah, it was the version that came out in, like, 2004. So I was the Audrey standby. Oh, nice. So I traveled for six months. I got to go on four times. Well, by any chance, would you happen to know somebody named Marty Robinson? I know who Marty, Marty is. Yes, I do okay, know Marty. Okay, yeah. Another, another very good friend of mine. Puppeteer. Yeah, Snuffleupagus. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, puppeteer. Uh, the puppeteer world is pretty small. So if you know one of those puppeteers, you tend to know the others at least peripherally. So, oh, yeah. I've yeah. had several Sesame Street puppeteers on this show before. Do you Are you familiar with a, a company called Monkey Boys? I don't think so. No. Oh, they they make a lot of puppets, and they make a lot of puppets actually for Little Shop, um, which is how I know Marty through them. I don't know Marty well, just who you know who he is, obviously. I'll tell him um, for you, please. Um, He's and great. Uh, yeah, but they the puppeteer world is really small, and they made a whole career out of making puppets. But they studied under Marty, and um, there's another guy well, who was. I've learned quite a lot from Marty too. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a big mentor of mine. Oh, that's great. Do you know who Kirk Thatcher is? As a matter of fact, I do, yes. I met him through those same guys, and, and watching his career lately has been spectacular. It really has, yeah. <laughs> just did Muppets Haunted Mansion last year, and that was... Yeah, did you watch... Uh, what was What's that thing that just came out? Werewolf by Night, or... Did you watch it? It's on... It's on Disney+. Plus. Okay, I'll and check it out. It's so good. It's okay. so good. And there's a puppet on there, and he, nice. he does that puppet, which is pretty cool. Cool. So do you remember the first ever voice acting role that you did? It was probably a radio ad, okay. I think. Um, yeah. Uh, or, a, or a video game, maybe. Mm -hmm. No, I think it was a radio. Uh, no. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. It was probably a radio ad. Um, and yeah, it was a partner radio ad with an actress who then became pretty famous. Her name is Rachel Boston. I can't remember what she's, she's been in lots of stuff. I don't know what she's doing now. But yeah, it was a just a radio ad for something. I don't even remember what it was. But yeah, it was a radio ad. Nice. Um, and then... You kind of you did a lot of voiceover stuff before getting Snow White, and you were talking a little bit about uh, how you got that. Uh, yeah, uh, and that's that's pretty cool. You know, you're doing one of the big big Disney characters. It's my favorite gig. I'm not gonna lie. Really? <laughs> yeah, because I just love her. I love her. Something about her is so sweet and loving and kind, and she's also like brave and a yeah. go getter. And you know, people yeah. give her a lot of flack, but I think she's I don't know. I think she's a badass. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you were saying that, uh, you know, she, that she's brave, all I was thinking about was that scene where a huntsman uh, was yeah. sent by the queen to try to to kill her, and then he's like, "I'm sorry, I can't do it. I'm not going to mm -hmm. do it. Get out of here!" As Run. Can. Exactly. And she yeah. runs. She runs into the dark forest. She meets a bunch of animals. She sings them a song. They they show her a cabin in the woods. She isn't that trespassing? Just wondering. <laughs> Sure, but they needed help. Those guys needed help, right? Yeah. She she keeps those uh, those uh, bachelors in line, and you know, and she's she says, "Hey, I'll I'll 
I'll earn my keep. If you let me stay here, I'll cook and clean for you and stuff. Like, I don't know. I think that's pretty resourceful. Mm -hmm. She also thinks the best in people, which obviously didn't do her well when the hag mm -hmm. comes with the apples. Yep. Because she does yeah. think, yeah, she does She's think little, the best She is people. a little naive, yes. But that's, she is, that's but I also, I also love that because I love to think that people are innately good. Yes. I hope. I mean, <laughs> probably not, but but I like to think that it's, they are. I mean, it's a good thing that it was in the suburbs and not in a big city. Yeah. <laughs> right. If it was in a big city, it would be worse than just a, an old woman with a poisonous <laughs> apple. Just saying. Yes, indeed, indeed. Yeah, so I, I think she's great. I've been doing her voice since... Um, I was going to ask you what the first... 2011, uh, I think. Was. Yeah, the first thing I did was a video game called... Disneyland Adventures. It was for Xbox Connect, and uh, but yeah, I remember when I when I booked the role, I I was beyond excited. And the first time I went in to record something, um, the casting director was like, "Yay, Katie, we're so excited for you! Congratulations!" And I was like, "Thanks." And he goes, "But look, you're not Cinderella." <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> He goes, I was like, Ugh. he goes, you're not going to be in here every couple of weeks. You're not going to buy a house off this thing. And I was like, okay. So he said, you'll be in here about once a quarter. And he's been pretty right. It's, it's averaged out to about once a quarter all these years, which has yeah. been awesome. And just when I think it's like, oh, that doesn't look like they're going to use me again. Then I get a phone call and I get to go in. And similar to as I was telling you earlier about like getting to go back to shows I've been to before what I love about doing Snow White is I get to work for the for the vast majority of the time with the same team, which are directors and producers from Disney character voices. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, Ben, how are you? Hey, Katie, how are you? It's just nice to be part of um, what feels like a cast. I guess it isn't technically because we're not all in the same, you know, shows and whatnot. But it's, it's nice to be a part of something on a repeat basis and to be part of such a legacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did you, 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 you weren't in Ralph Breaks the Internet doing Snow White, right? No, so that's Pamela Ribbon. Right, so, yeah. I, was yes. I was trying to remember, because I, I, I don't think it, because I didn't think it was you, but I was like, no, I think it was someone it's else. It's not me. Um, uh, if you listen, you'll hear it's, it sounds a bit different. It's Pamela. Pamela Ribbon wrote the movie, and she did the scratch track, and they just decided to keep her in the film. It was heartbreaking for me not to be in it. I will be completely frank about that. Um, I do think she did a great job. I think the, the script is hilarious. I think she did a great job as Snow. It's super funny. And I actually met Pamela. I had a film that was in competition at the Austin Film Festival. And Pamela was there teaching uh, a couple of, uh, or leading a couple of panels. And I attended one of her panels and I was just so inspired by her. I think she's just really brilliant and I was getting ready to take part in the pitch competition there which um, I made it into the finals which was really exciting and she was sort of helping people with their pitches and so after the panel I went up and introduced myself and she said oh I know who you are <laughs> and uh, we took a picture together two Snow Whites together and tried to break the internet ourselves we did not <laughs> uh, but yeah I was not in Ralph Breaks the Internet damn yeah uh I know. Good, it's, good, it's, for, good for Pamela, though. Good for Pamela. You know, she wrote it. She deserves all the success she gets. And, uh, I, you know, I don't begrudge her. It's not her fault that happened. You know, it just did for whatever reason. And people get and lose jobs for all kinds of reasons in this business. So you just can't think about it too hard. But she, I met her and she was really, really lovely. It was really fun to meet her. Now, you are actually the second Disney princess voice artist that I have ever met. And that kind of makes me wonder, have you ever met any of the other Disney princess voice artists? Yeah. So I know Kate Higgins, who does Aurora now. Mm -hmm. I know Julie Nathanson, who sometimes does Belle. Um, uh, and I know um, uh, Jennifer Hale, who does Cinderella. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I've met. Go ahead. Yeah. So I basically know all the gals who voice match, right? I don't know any of the originals. Yeah, I actually, uh, I haven't met any of the voice matches. The only other Disney princess that I've met is uh, Linda Larkin, who does Jasmine. Jasmine, yeah. Um, Jasmine, of course. She is a lovely, lovely person. Oh, that's awesome. Like, that yeah, is, I, 
that sweetness in Jasmine's voice, that's, mm-hmm. you can really hear it in Linda. But honestly, like when I, now when I watch Aladdin and I hear Jasmine's voice, I don't see Jasmine. You I see, see Linda? Her. I see her, yeah. Yeah, so part of what um, I'm really careful about is I never, I never let anybody videotape me doing Snow's voice. Fair because enough. I, for the reason you just mentioned, mm-hmm. I don't want to break that sort of magic um, thing that happens in our brains where we really believe that, you know, she is that person. And, and her, like I said, and her voice is, is not my voice, it's Adriana's and I match it. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't want anyone to ever um, not think about snow when they hear snow. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't let anybody videotape me doing her voice. Well, thank God this is an audio show. So <laughs> Snow White, are you there? Uh, yeah. Well, don't you post this on, you post the, um, video though. Yeah. I, I edit it. Oh, you put, edit put it. Pictures of what we're talking about to be shown over the. Audio oh, show. I see. I see. I see. I see. Well, I can just go like this. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Goodbye. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> that, that, would, that would be perfect for a recorded message. Hi. Leave a message. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, and I met, um, gosh, she's. She's now, sometimes I get, uh, the voice print of Snow White is pretty similar to Minnie Mouse at times. There's a little bit of crossover from time to time. Mm-hmm. And before she died, I actually got to meet Rusty Taylor, Aww. which was really, she was so wonderful to me. Like, I was relatively new to the job at the time, and I think we were in a radio commercial together, and she was in the session right before me. And so we got introduced, and she was so lovely and so sweet and gave me a big hug. And I was like, I met Minnie Mouse. It was amazing. Was this after uh, Wayne Allwine passed away? Yes, it was after Wayne. For, any, for anyone yeah. who doesn't know who Wayne is, Wayne was uh, was Mickey Mouse, and he, yeah, he was I Mickey Mouse, and and she was Minnie Mouse, and they were married. Right. Yeah, that's why I was yeah. wondering. Yeah, they were married in real life, which is pretty neat. And Brett, uh, Brett does, uh, Brett Iwan does Mickey Mouse now. Right. Yeah. For the most part, again, there's the occasional like. You know, Donald Duck has occasional thing, people doing other things, but, you know, Tony Anselmo's the, the main voice, and same thing with Mickey Mouse, it's mostly Brett. Yeah, I feel like one of the only Disney characters, like, out of the, like, Mickey Mouse and Friends franchise that, uh, whose voice actor has stayed consistent all these years is Goofy. Mm-hmm. Another friend of Bill mine. Farmer. Yeah. yeah, Bill Farmer. I've met Bill. He yeah, is I've met so Bill. cool. Yeah. He he, actually, what a, he, he, you know, I think he's had to re-audition for that over the years. Oh, that surprises me because he's so yeah. perfect at it. Well, they, I think they just, whenever I think they would have to, they think, well, maybe we should replace him. And then they go, no, nope, no, nope, he's in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's really, yeah, he's spectacular. He's so good. I'm, I'm not as good as it as he is. I mean, you know, he's been doing it for like 35 years. So he's the, he's the master. <laughs> he is the master. And um, I hope he gets to do it till he can't do it anymore because I think it's neat. Well, he, he really is goofy. Yes, he is. He's a very funny guy. <laughs> he is, yeah. Do you, do you have any favorite Disney princesses that aren't Snow White? Yes. Okay. So um, I have several, actually. So when I was growing up, my gal was Aurora. Like, I loved Sleeping Beauty. She was my gal. I wanted to sing Once Upon a Dream in my backyard, and that's what I wanted to do. And, uh, and then I played played um ariel when i worked at tokyo disneyland oh, that's back cool. in the day so i i have a very special place in my heart for ariel hmm. ariel is probably no offense Ariel's probably my favorite too i mean she's great right yeah, just she's because great. little little Mer- i disney believe it or not was my very first ever interest when i was a kid i uh-huh. grew up with disney and all that stuff and the Little Mermaid was one of the very first movies I ever watched uh, with my eyeballs. Like, oh. not, in a, not in a theater. Uh, Got it. I, I, the first movie I actually went to in the theater was Monsters Incorporated. Um, okay. Oh, wow. Also Disney. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That shows how much of a Disney nut I am. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Little Mermaid is definitely my favorite Disney princess movie. The other one that's high up there for me is Tangled. Oh, I love Tangled. And I'm a huge Mandy Moore fan. I was, I haven't met her, but we have, been, we have literally been within minutes of each other in recording sessions. Like I've been there and it's like, oh, well, Mandy was just here. And I'm like, dang it. <laughs> yeah. I'd probably be like that too. Like if she, uh, Mandy, if you're listening, uh, 
She is one of the many celebrities that if I saw in a room with me, I'd just want to give a big hug to. <laughs> I love Apparently her. she's really lovely. So yeah. I've, again, I've never met her. I hope to cross paths at some point, but yeah, she's awesome. I have worked though with um, Zachary Levi, who plays nice. Flynn Rider. Yeah, I did a benefit concerts with him many, many years ago uh, for the Alzheimer's Association. Um, and that's actually where I worked with him, and I was so smitten with him. He is so nice. Not because he's that handsome, but because he's the nicest, nerdiest yeah. lover of musical theater you've ever met in your whole life. Yeah, it's, I've, he, I've watched his live streams a couple of times. Yeah, he's just not what you think he is, right? And so I think he was on Chuck at the time, or had just finished it, and... I remember coming home. Chuck, I right, that was the show that he was on, right? Yeah, Chuck. So I remember being at rehearsal and meeting him and coming home and talking to my, I think it was my boyfriend at the time, and I was like, I'm really sorry, but I'm in love with Zachary Levi, and <laughs> I might have to leave you for him. And then I introduced the two of them uh, like at the, after the performance, and my boyfriend goes, oh, I'm in love with him too. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, he's the nicest guy. Yeah, he just was so nice. And then I never thought he'd remember me. And about six months later, I ran into him in the Rite Aid parking lot. And he gave me a huge hug, remembered who I was, and was really super sweet. Uh, and then I met him again years later, and he did not remember who I was. But we oh, had a mutual wow. friend, and I reminded him, and he, was, he remembered the event. Uh, but super nice guy. Super nice, super nerdy, loves theater, loves, he's just, he's one of us, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he's, he's pretty cool. Now I know yeah. what I'm going to watch tonight, Tangled. Oh, I love Tangled, love it! Uh, great, even some, of, even some of my very best friends love it. Like, when I went to it, I was 11, and mm. um, I was still watching Disney stuff, but was also starting to watch uh, stuff like, I don't want to say adult shows, um... I auditioned for Rapunzel, I actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. Like for the <laughs> Yeah. Wow. For the part that, Ma that Mandy got. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. Uh-huh. Well, here I am talking to what would have been Rapunzel. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, Mandy's fantastic in that Oh, part. yeah. I, I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, so what are some of your favorite Snow White songs? Well, um, I love um, With a Smile and a Song. With, that she sings to the animals in the dark forest. That's the only one I don't remember. Oh, I she's watched so, that movie in so long. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go like this. She, you know, she's, she's running to the forest and she's, she's, you know, she's getting her wits about her and she says to them, she says, "Oh, please don't run away. I won't hurt you. I'm awfully sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you, but you don't know what I've been through." And then she asks them, "What do you do? What do you yeah, do when you?" And she says, "Oh, you sing this." And then she sings uh, with a smile and a song to the to the animals, and they they whistle with her and sing with her. It's 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 so sweet. It's now, so sweet. now I do remember it. Wow. Yeah, that's my favorite, probably. Mm -hmm. I think my mm -hmm. favorite one that Snow White did that I do remember very well is when you were talking about before. I'm I'm wishing. I'm wishing. Okay, so when I worked at Tokyo Disneyland, um, I. I was in Disneyland uh, very frequently. I'd only been to Disneyland maybe twice in my life prior I've to that. I've been to Disneyland once, and I've been to Disney World once. As you can, I don't know if you can see behind me. I see know, it. Yeah. I know that none of the listeners can, but it's like a photo gallery of my trip it, to Disney World. Love it. Um, I see Jesse over there, and is that Woody too? Woody, yep. And there's Chip and Dale. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a big fan of the Mickey Mouse and Friends franchise, so. I was, okay. really, I was really excited to meet Chip and Dale, and I was like, look at my sister who's in that picture with me, and I was like, oh, yeah, they're both stupid. And Dale, <laughs> I don't remember which one it was, but just folded their arms and looked at me like, who are you calling stupid, stupid? Oh, cute. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, what was I talking about? You were talking about uh, uh, Tokyo Disneyland. Yeah, what about it? We were talking about the song I'm Wishing. Oh, yes. So I was there frequently, and they have Snow White's Grotto at Tokyo Disneyland, just like they do at Disneyland here. And I wasn't familiar with it, because again, I'd only been to Disneyland twice. And uh, one of the other actresses there, who was, uh, we were in the same track, she was also a singer. She was like, oh, you have to go by Snow White's Wishing Well. It, it echoes. She sings, and, it, and it, the Wishing Well echoes. And I was like, what? And so... I went over there and, you know, one of my days off when I was in the park 
And I fell in love with Snow White's Grotto. And it became a place where I would go to, um, not quite like meditate, but to just, just relax and just to be, I don't know, something about the echo coming from within the well, as opposed to from the fountain. The other, the rest of it comes from the fountain of which has like a Snow White statues and a statue and seven dwarf statues and fire and, uh, like a deer and stuff like that. But the, the echo comes from inside the well. So the song is coming from the Snow White statue and then the what the echo is coming from the well. And something about that for me was, I don't know, so magical. It, I fell in love with Snow White then. I had no idea that many years later I would become her voice, but that's what made me fall in love with Snow White was the, the wishing well, and I'm yes. wishing. Mm -hmm. You're going to yeah. love this. We nicknamed my grandfather Grumpy. Hey, man, I get it. I'm grumpy well, all the time. Well, the, the, <laughs> here, here's why. When I was born, uh, my dad, I think it was my dad who came up with Gumpy as kind of like a, uh, a nickname for somebody's grandfather that they could remember besides grandpa. Cause sure, sure. When you're little, some real words are hard to say. So yes. My, my, <laughs> even the word spoon, probably hard to say for, for a little kid. So. Sure. Yeah. My, my dad goes by gramps, but when my nieces were little, one of them couldn't say that and she called him derps. So she still sometimes calls him derps instead of gramps. That's funny. Uh, but yeah, my grandfather had a uh, doll of grumpy from the seven dwarves. That was about like twice the size of my body at the time because I was just a baby. Yeah. So, there we are with Gumpy, and then I immediately said Grumpy, and that was ah. years ago, which just kind of stuck. Even, That's fun. Even in my phone, Grumpy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to call him. I had to call him from where I was. I was like, oh, I'm locked in, and I was with somebody, and so I was like, oh, wait, Grumpy has the key. And then she's like, wait, you have him in <laughs> your like, phone as Grumpy? She knew who it You're was. Like, call Grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. That's cute. Yeah. Um, uh, going back to Snow White songs, the other one from the movie that I like, I don't think Snow White sang it, but it was, um, Ho hum, the tune is dumb, the words don't mean a thing. Isn't this a silly song for anyone to sing? The yodel song. Yeah, she sings a little bit in it, but she just, um, <laughs> she sings stuff like that in it. You're good she at that. Actually, You're really yeah. good at that. Oh, thanks. So she doesn't sing two amazing. words, but she sings a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't trying to match her right there, by the way. I was just, That's just right. singing. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we actually, you were talking about the Snow White attractions at the theme parks. When we were at Disney World, we actually went to mm -hmm. the Snow White, not roller coaster, but little ride that they have there. Where the mine train ride? Yeah, where yeah. it just goes through scenes from the movie. And um, I hope my mom... Oh, Snow White I Scary Adventures? Something like that, but... For my mom. I yeah, it's been mom. redone at Disneyland. I don't know if it's also been redone at Disney World, but I think they've made it a little less scary. I was it's just actually say, pretty yeah, scary for little kids. I was going to say, yeah, I hope my mother doesn't mind me telling the story. But um, when we went there, um, she was saying, when I was a kid, this frightened me because of the queen, which I understand. Because I was talking to um, somebody uh, recently on this show, as a matter of fact, we were talking about uh, older movies for children that are really dark. And I said, if you want dark, oh, yeah. take the ending of Snow White up until the, the whole first, movie is the frightening. Kids. Yeah. Well, the one, the one that really, the whole me, movie is frightening. I totally agree. But a man's going to kill her and take her, her heart back to this woman. I mean, it's bananas, but at least he didn't. Uh, That's true. But I'll tell you what, Snow White was not for children. It was for God. everyone. Oh, right. <laughs> that had me worried there. <laughs> No, but Disney, because Disney, you know, they weren't making movies for children. Fair enough. Yeah. They were making, they were and making animation for children. They were making it for everyone. Yeah. It was, it was, That's it was, it was, it wasn't children's entertainment at, at Disney. You know, it was everything. It was family entertainment. That's how I describe yeah. it. Family yeah, family entertainment. Exactly. Yeah. So it was for something, you know, it wasn't for, it wasn't children's entertainment. Mm-hmm. But the one dark scene in Snow White that always gets to me to this day is where the queen, who's now looking like an old thing, uh, she realizes that. Old hag. She, mm -hmm. Thank you. She, I thought hag would have been too mm -hmm. negative a word. But um, 
No, that's what they call her. That's her. That's that's literally the name when when you play that role. She's the hag. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, she's at <laughs> the edge of the cliff, and uh, she notices that the dwarves are cornering her. She's like, "Oh crud! I'm trapped. What do I do?" So she tries to throw them off by pushing a boulder toward them, but lightning causes yes. the boulder to uh, to go the other way, and you don't mm-hmm. actually see the boulder crush her. Thank God. But you do see these creepy looking vultures staring down at her. Turkey vultures gonna eat her. <laughs> well, I hope they enjoyed. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So moving on from Snow White, uh, let's talk more about uh, Disney stuff. Uh, you've done Wrigley on Sophia the First. Yeah, I did Wrigley. That was really fun. Wrigley had a song and everything, which is awesome. I don't think and I, I also saw did... Wrigley. I, I saw, I've seen Sophia the First, but very, very sporadically. Like if I'm at friends' houses and those, some of those friends have kids that have watched that show. So that's... Yeah, that's a, that's a show for kids, right? We were just talking about, you know, Snow White was not originally for kids, but Sophia yeah, the, the First... The ending certainly wasn't. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I did Sophia the First. I've done her, done that show as Wrigley and also as Snow White because Snow White makes an appearance on that right, show. Yeah. And then I've done Elena of, of Avalor. I got to sing a song on that too. Uh, I got to play a Floringo. Um, yeah, it's been great. Now, when you did, it's Sophia nice when they the... occasionally bring me in for other stuff. That's awesome. Uh, did you get to meet Ariel Winter when you did Sophia the First? No, for the most part, when you're right. doing voiceover, you're just alone in a booth. Right, yeah. You're alone in a booth. You're just, you know, you, the only chance you get to really um, meet other people is if maybe if you're a series regular on a show, sometimes they record everybody together. But a lot of that has stopped because of the pandemic. So a lot of yeah. people are recording from their home studios. I've got a home studio over there. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so we, we interact with each other very little and now because of the advent of everybody working from home even less Mm. which is a bummer Mm. so uh i do have some questions about uh your live action shows but let's wrap up the animation talk first by talking a little bit about uh about batwoman um do you find it difficult Uh, to catwoman catwoman so i did lego batman right yeah it's all right i did uh lego batman dc comic superheroes unite and i played a lego catwoman lego bat computer uh, and that was really fun. The cast of that film was tremendous, and it was a blast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like Fine. Rob Paulson was in, was in that recording. I think he ended up, yeah. So I met Rob. I met Townsend. I met, uh, uh, oh God, just so many amazing people on that job. It was fantastic. Yeah, Rob's a very, I've met Rob too. He's such a nice guy. Like he talked my family up for a long time. That's so nice. How generous he was. Um, Aw, And yeah. doing video games. He's a good guy. Uh, like what are some of the challenges for doing voices for video games? Yeah, so for me, for video games, I'm very good at like effort sounds and fight sounds and things like that. But and shred your, your voice. I don't want to damage my voice, but I do a lot of that, you know, like, okay, and now you're death scream and now you're hit over the head with a hammer and you fall 10,000 feet, you know, whatever. I love to do all that stuff, but it can be very taxing on my voice. Okay. Um, yeah. So, but I like it. I like doing it. I just have to do it sporadically. Mm, fair enough. Yeah. 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 So you've done a like if I had to do that every day, there's no way I could do Snow White. It would just it would just shred my voice. I'd be I'd yeah, be. You've got to go above and beyond for that. Like she's got yeah, she's a, she's a she's a color tour soprano. She's way the heck up there. So I can't I can't I can't afford to um, damage my voice in that way. So mm. yeah, but it's fun. It's really fun. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, like I just yeah. did my first voiceover gig on the first show I worked on last year. So oh, congrats. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I, it that's was, awesome. Uh, Congrats. Yeah, they I, they just ran. I was a production assistant, but we were we, we didn't have a lot of people, so it was like, all right, somebody's got to hold camera, somebody's got to hold sound, and uh, they just wanted somebody yeah. to hold the lines for this character, uh, like so that mm-hmm. our cast, which was which was a bunch of kids, could have something to respond to, and then I asked if I could do the character, and we recorded it live. So oh, that's awesome. So that's they great. Ended up using me, which was nice. That's fantastic. Congrats. Thank you. 
Uh, yeah. So you've done a ton of uh, stuff on Young Sheldon as well. Um, yeah, so I played the reporter on um, Young Sheldon, and I've been doing it since, gosh, the first season. And I remember the, the very first episode I did, um, I had to, like, there was some sort of emergency or something and the date changed. And so I had to fly home early from a vacation. And I remember them saying to me like, Oh, thank you so much for coming home early. We really appreciate it. Like, you know, you're part of our family now. And I thought to myself, yeah, right. And then sure enough, like, I've been back so many times. I've been back six times, but you, you know, as an actor, you're like, Oh, I'll never be back there again. But, um, sure enough, they were, they were like, Oh, you're part of the Chuck Lorre family. And I had done, a voice on Big Bang, and I had done a voice on Mom, and that's two... that's a show that my family and I love too. Mom or Big Bang? Both, but Mom is one that. Oh yeah, yeah, great shows, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think just I think Chuck Lorre shows are fantastic. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, so good. So yeah, I've done seven episodes of that, and I've gotten to work with all the cast, all the main cast of that show, which has been really awesome. And it's another. I also like it because. It takes me eight minutes to get to Warner Brothers. <laughs> that's that's lucky. <laughs> yeah. That's lucky. Yeah. In Los Angeles particularly, that's a miracle. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And you were also on another, uh, actually one of my very favorite live action sitcoms. You did an episode of Two Broke Girls. No, I didn't. Oh, you? Oh, okay. It was on IMDb. IMDb sometimes has lies. Yeah. Well, I was talking, do you know Laura Faye Smith? I don't. Okay, she does Rosalina on uh, Mario, and oh, okay. she, she uh -huh. was credited in something on IMDb, and I said, what was that like? She's like, I'm not in that. So. And yeah, I, people have put things on there, and I try to get them off, and then they pop back up again, and I'm like, I'm not in that. It's not me. Well, there Crazy. We, there we go. You are the second guest who has ever complained about IMDb. <laughs> IMDb. I feel, I feel like we should make this a regular segment now. Uh, I'm just going to go through your IMDb page. <laughs> Tell me if yeah, you let me guess which project you're not in. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any favorite live action roles that you've done? Like on TV shows, whether or not it's a one shot or whether or not you just come back for either one character on a show or on one episode and then you come back to the show to do another character anyone stand out for you well you can't you, you you don't it's very rare that you do the same show as a different character it almost never happens mm -hmm. it did happen to me once but only because one of the characters was you only see like this much of her so they didn't have to worry about me being recognizable um, so, cause part of me was this and then part of me was just this. Um, but other than that, uh, you rarely get to do a show twice unless you're playing the same character. Um, as far as like a favorite, I honestly, it's just, um, well, I love the show I just worked on and, and well, I love young Sheldon because again, they've been so warm and kind to me telling me I was part of the family and I was like, no way. And then sure enough. I've been back six more times, and they've been so lovely to me there. Um, but also this show I just worked on, the um, Lopez versus Lopez, which is coming out with George Lopez and Mayan Lopez, where I'm the voice of TikTok. And, uh, like TikTok the app? Gosh. Yeah. Like when they do like a, you know, you know, the little things come up, it's like talk to speech or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I do the voice of that. Okay. So it's like, that's, you know. That's cool. Yeah, it's really fun, really fun. And um, but I love that show because it's a female Latina showrunner um, who is Debbie Wolf, who is just a spitfire. She's so talented and creative and nice and and fun and kind and outgoing and warm and talented. And she's created a spectacular show and. So I love, I love that. So pro right now, the, what I'm feeling right now is I love going to Young Sheldon because everybody is, I mean, the nicest, the nicest crews, spectacular. And then same with Lopez versus Lopez because I love Debbie. I'm just a huge fan of Debbie. That's awesome. Yeah. And then, of course, working on Conan because, uh, you know, the comedy writers got to be, um, you know, they'd write things specifically with me in mind and. 
that feels good. It yeah, feels I good bet. when someone's yeah. like, oh, you know what? You know what? Let's let's write something for Katie. Yeah. Oh, that is good. I'm like, oh, Katie'd be right for this. I mean, not having to audition some for something is spectacular, and that's the only instance where I haven't had to is when I do Conan. Yeah. Well, I mean, they know you, so they know your style. Yeah. Yeah. And now, of course, the show's gone, so I'm sad about it. But, but, well, interestingly, I the last time I was on Young Sheldon. Um, I was on, I, they took over part of stage 15, which is the same stage that um, Conan was on. So it was like, oh, I love this stage. And that again, it only takes me eight yeah. minutes to get, yeah, it also takes me eight minutes to get to Warner Brothers. <clears throat> Lopez versus Lopez is at Universal Studios, which literally my house looks out onto Universal Studios. So I can oh, get there. Nice. Like, yeah, so I can get there in like six minutes. It's, I love working close to home. It's such a joy. I mean, in Los You're Angeles. You can have an audition that's like an hour and a half away. Mm. So you're like right in the mm -hmm. in the center of LA or like right in the city. Yeah, I live in the I I can see the Hollywood sign from my house. I can see the Griffith Observatory. I can see, and then my the back of my house faces the valley, so I look out over the whole valley and then the mountains, so I overlook Universal Studios. I see Hogwarts every day. Could you could you send me a picture of the Hollywood sign from your house? I want to see it. Yeah, it's farm distance, but yeah, I can do that. I'll yeah, send it to I'd you. I'd love to I'll see send you that, that and I'll send you. Cool. Yeah, it's neat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Although from mine, it kind of looks like it says, uh, it's sort of like from the sides, so it looks like it says, hood, because you can't tell like what the L's are and what the Y is. It just looks like hood I instead still, of I'd still be able to recognize it, yeah. I mean, you will, oh, 100%. It's hard, it's hard yeah. not to recognize that, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's all I've got. Is there anything you want to say to wrap up? Um, let's see. Uh, well, for those of you who are in the U.S., don't forget to vote. We've got midterm elections coming up very soon. Um, those of you who are working in the industry or aspiring to be in the industry, welcome. It'll, it'll, it'll I go look from forward mid, to It'll go from midterm it. election day from midterm election week like it did last time. That's right. Probably so. Well, I, I actually um, started this so Everybody vote. I actually started this podcast around that time, and I had a recording the day before it was announced that Biden was president, and the day I was recording, everyone was uh -huh. still waiting. So I said, if you're bored waiting for the election results, you've come to the right place. And my guest says to me, I don't know if I'm as exciting as the election results. But here you go. So yeah, so, uh, and then I, I'd love... I'd love, I'd love everybody to vote. I think everybody should do their civic duty. If you're in an, if you're in a, a crew in the entertainment industry or you're an actor, I hope you'll join your union. I hope you'll support the labor movement everywhere. Uh, workers are important. <laughs> be nice. Be kind. What else can I say? Uh, and I, I just hope that everybody. I don't know. We were talking earlier about how you know Snow White thinks everybody's innately good and. Um, I, I just hope to here is be continue who you my life. <laughs> be careful who you trust. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, I just hope everybody's everybody's kind to each other, and and we all survive this life. And um, please turn into Lopez versus Lopez on November fourth, and then in a couple weeks I'll be on Young Sheldon. So please turn back into Young Sheldon as well. If you don't watch that show every week, you should. It's amazing. Just it's heartfelt it. and laugh out loud funny. Like it's both. It is funny. And yeah. then Lopez. Oh, so good. And then Lopez versus Lopez, people are going to love it. I'm telling you, it is, it's a classic sitcom in a way, classic sitcoms are classic sitcoms, but it really has a modern feel as well. It's just, it hits all the right spots for me. I love multicam, so I get, I get that fed over at Lopez versus Lopez, and then I get my single cam fix over at Young Sheldon. So tune in, everybody, and then uh, stay tuned for some Snow White news at some point. I can't say anything about it, but uh, there should be something uh, not too long from uh, now where she makes an appearance, and uh, I'll be promoting that when it comes along. But in the meantime, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, say hey, and uh, yeah, well, keep we'll cool. Put, we'll, I'll put your social media links in the description in case anybody wants to follow you. Sounds great. And to all you listeners out there, st uh, where do we go from here? Episode number 52. I don't know That's when. Right. I don't know when that'll be. Cause mind you. I, I don't know when. I don't know how. But something's happening right now. 
<laughs> exactly. And uh, yeah, to all you listeners, hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you next time. And if a strange lady offers you an apple, don't take it. See you next Just time. Just say no. Thanks. Exactly. Thanks, Dan. Thank you.